it can go zero to 60 in about three seconds at 200 miles an hour. A mean machine, and for some, a time machine. Most Corvette buyers are men in their middle age, feeding the notion that they're somehow seeking their lost youth, what some call a midlife crisis. You hear the term, I have to have one before I die. At Rydell Chevrolet in Northridge, California, sales manager Rick Petalou says the guys who buy Corvettes know exactly what they're getting. Are they buying performance or are they buying the fantasy? The fantasy. A fantasy to ward off a special evil. The term midlife crisis was coined in 1965 by the late Canadian psychoanalyst Elliot Jocks, and it started with fear. They were afraid of aging. They felt that their life was over. Margie Lockman is a psychologist at Brandeis University in Massachusetts and a lead researcher in an ongoing study on midlife, the most in-depth ever in the United States. They realized they had not accomplished all their goals and had not been able to realize their dreams, and they thought it was too late, that there was really no more time to do this. I'm here today to again apologize. The concept is so widely accepted, it's often blamed for men behaving badly, from Wiener to Schwarzenegger to Clinton. Actually, my wife and I are separated. Oh. Well, what I mean is separated in the sense that she went away for the summer. And from the seven-year itch, to Moonstruck, it's one of Hollywood's go-to themes. Why do men chase women? Nerves. I think it's because they fear death. But as it turns out, our assumptions are wrong. Surprisingly, Margie Lockman's research shows that very few men, perhaps only 10 to 12 percent, have anything approaching a crisis. Your numbers would suggest that the vast majority of people take this in stride. I would say they do. Uh, 85, 90 percent. Yeah. We find a lot of things going on in midlife that are very positive. The top, really the top of their game, in a sense, in the workforce, in their family. So in some ways, I think midlife should be associated more with competence and confidence uh, than a crisis. Those facts aside, it's the men who are suffering who are driving the discussion. Their fear is real, and that's driving a booming business promising to reverse midlife aging. How does this 70-year-old doctor have the body of a 30-year-old? People look at me and they say, you look amazing from the neck down. And I tell them that no one is more amazed than I am. Dr. Jeffrey Life runs a clinic in Las Vegas, and he thinks he has the answer, testosterone. This is what the, the patient would get, this vial of testosterone. And then you uh, draw that out into a syringe and mm -hmm. inject it mm -hmm. into the muscle of your leg once a week. Once a week. Most men's testosterone level peaks in their late 20s and declines steadily, about 1% a year after age 30. Dr. Life says, stop the decline and you regain your youth. Well, I mean, I do things today at age 72 that I would never have even considered doing 10 years ago. I'm working on my black belt in Taekwondo. I lift weights five mornings a week with Rod, my trainer. I wrote a book. I mean, these are things that I could not have done 10, 15 years ago. His body is his proof. What he was like in his 50s and where he is today after eight years taking testosterone. However we define midlife, let's just throw out there's our 50-ish. Um, how many men at that age do you think need the kind of therapy that you offer? Which would include the correcting testosterone deficiencies, exercise, nutrition, supplementation. A hundred percent. Everybody. Everybody. And Dr. Life isn't alone. Testosterone has gone mainstream, jumping from ads in the back of men's magazines to slick commercials on network television. Could be an easily treatable condition called low T. The result, sales of testosterone products have shot up as if they're on steroids from 550 million in 2006 to 1.3 billion in 2010. The TV ad says your golf swing will get better, your sex life will get better. What do you say? 
this, it wasn't testosterone even a few years ago. It was melatonin, then it was DHEA. Back in the 1800s, it was ground up goat testicles. And this goes, goes back hundreds of years with the whole notion of the fountain of youth. Dr. Thomas Pearls is an expert on aging at the Boston Medical Center. He sees not the benefits of testosterone, but a laundry list of dangerous side effects. There was a very high profile New England Journal of Medicine article that found a very high rate, four times greater rate for cardiovascular events, things like arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation, heart attack. His prescription to reverse a midlife slowdown? Do it the old fashioned way. Go to the gym and just work on the weights. Look at all the people out there on the weights. I would wager that the vast majority of them are not taking any drugs and they're feeling great. I know so many people who don't call it a midlife crisis. They call it an opportunity. I have to keep moving or I catch up with myself, if that makes any sense. Uh, and I caught up with myself yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and, I, and I didn't like me. <laughs> Come on, we're normal. Comparatively normal. <laughs> Opportunity is exactly what comedian Ray Romano was looking for at age 47 when he found himself suddenly adrift. You know, Raymond was nine years, and before that I was stand-up for 11 years. It was 20 years of, of, of this creative uh, outlet that I had, and all of a sudden there was nothing, and I found myself wondering, what the hell am I going to do with the rest of my life? What, am, what have I done? So Romano, along with his friend and producer Mike Royce, decided to explore their own changing lives on television. Okay, right here, right here. It's not blurry anymore, but now it's too far away that I can't read it. I'm never going to know what it says on a ketchup bottle. It's ketchup, what are you going to know about it? They call their current show, co-starring Scott Bakula and Andre Brower, men of a certain age. And yes, that means middle age. You're a 49-year-old man. How many 16-year-old friends you got? She's not 16. Yeah, well, she's closer to 16 or 49, I'll tell you that. Age is just a number, my friends. Just a oh, number. Oh, it's really a very exciting time, in a way. Uh, I, I kind of liken it to, it's like your second teenagerhood. Uh, you, you, your brain is, go, is processing a lot of information. They say the show has helped all of them gain a new perspective. When I went to get my checkup at age 55, mm -hmm. My doctor said, well, you're just getting, welcome to the second half of your life. And, I, and I'm, I, you know, I'm thinking 110. <laughs> wow, you know, that's kind of maybe a, a real solid reality. I'm thinking, well, that's a lot of time. Bacula is on to something, say researchers, who suggest contentment, not crisis, is the true reality of midlife for most men. It, it takes a while before you accept that you're not going to be able to do this anymore. You're not as young as this. You, you know, you're... Women aren't going to be as attracted to you anymore. You know, that's just the way life is. And, and there is, you know, contentment to be had at that age. You just got to, it takes adjustment. And what's ahead can look pretty good, says psychologist Margie Lockman. We don't have to assume that uh, you are stuck and that it's just all downhill from here. And in many ways, we can say that um, those who are in the middle are really, they're in the driver's seat. Um, and I don't necessarily mean in a sports car. Just remember, whatever you do, it always helps to sprinkle in a little bit of humor. You know, midlife doesn't own the crisis. Uh, no. Of life. Right. I was having a crisis in my 20s. It's only a midlife crisis because I'm midlife now. That's all. Yes. I had a 20s you... crisis, a 30s crisis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs>